The 19th Amendment, granting national suffrage for women, was adopted on August 26, 1920, making this year the centennial of its passage. We don't know how the builders of our two historic structures, John Warnell and Alexander Majors, would have felt about the 19th Amendment, as both died before its passage, with John dying in 1892 and Alexander in 1900. However, Alexander Major's youngest daughter, Eleanor, took a leading role in fighting for women's suffrage in California and the larger United States. Eleanor was born in Nebraska City in 1863, two years after the failure of her father's venture with the Pony Express and the bankruptcy of his freighting business. Interestingly, Major's sole reason for going into freighting in 1848 was, according to his memoirs, because he had daughters who were to be clothed and educated, although Eleanor was yet to be born. He certainly succeeded in the case of Eleanor, who attended Napa Ladies Seminary in Napa, California, where she would have studied math, English, science, music, painting, and a foreign language. She married at the age of 18 to Albert Carlyle, a successful stationer and printer in San Francisco. Like her father, she jumped into the business world with few reservations, first designing the logo for A. Carlyle and Company, and then serving as the company's president after the death of her husband in 1904. She was 41 years old. Following her husband's death, she threw herself into women's clubs in Berkeley, California. Women's clubs in the 19th and early 20th centuries were more than just social gatherings. They gave women a way to influence social reforms at a time when women had little political power. Eleanor was especially focused on issues directly affecting women and children, joining groups like the Child's Welfare League, the Women's Health Committee, and the Berkeley Women's Club. Eleanor was elected to the Berkeley Board of Education in 1909, making her the first woman to serve that role. Her win was especially impressive because women had not yet achieved suffrage in California. She received the votes of men while running a campaign devoted to the needs of mothers and children. Her campaign gave women in Berkeley the unique opportunity to participate in the political process, most for the first time. Over 700 women volunteered for her campaign, canvassing, designing flyers, and organizing rallies. Eleanor frequently butted heads with the otherwise all-male Board of Education. At one meeting in 1910, she said, not one of the members of this board has shown the least interest in the social side of education for the young, and I, for one, don't propose to stand for it. Not one of you men knows the slightest thing about it. As long as I am a member of this board, I intend to advocate what mothers want, and I shall not be dominated by any member of the board. On another occasion, she referred to board members across the state, almost entirely men, as feeble-minded idiots. Her fiery rhetoric extended to women's suffrage. She first entered the fight for the vote in 1896, meeting Susan B. Anthony that year. The quickening of the spirit on behalf of women will break out into a wild flame if the men are not careful, she declared in 1909. Using her rare position as a woman in elected office, Eleanor gave speeches at pro-suffrage conferences, rallies, and women's meetings throughout the state. She encouraged women to be informed and outspoken, saying, first, watch legislation everywhere, second, express yourself. Women in California won the right to vote in 1911 with the passage of California Proposition 4. After the victory, Eleanor immediately devoted herself to the national cause. She became a member of the National Women's Party, serving on the National Committee of State Chairman. Although there is no evidence Eleanor ever participated, the National Women's Party picketed the White House from 1917 to 1919 during the Silent Sentinels protests. Throughout this vigil, nearly 2,000 women were harassed, arrested, beaten, and jailed by local authorities. The party played a critical role in the passage of the 19th Amendment in 1920, which enfranchised 26 million American women. Woman suffrage is a long story of hard work and heartache, crowned by victory. 
The amendment failed to fully enfranchise many minority women, including Black and Native American women, who were kept from voting by state constitutional loopholes. It was not until 1962 that Native Americans could vote in all 50 states and 1965 when the Voting Rights Act was passed, which prohibited racial discrimination and fully enfranchised Black Americans. An interesting comparison to Eleanor can be found in Roma Johnson Warnell, John Warnell's third wife. Despite Eleanor being Alexander Major's daughter and Roma being John Warnell's wife, the two women were contemporaries. Eleanor was born in 1863 and died in 1932 at the age of 69. Roma was born in 1846 and died in 1933 at the age of 87. Like Eleanor, Roma was extremely involved in women's clubs, especially after the death of her husband when she was in her 40s. Neither woman remarried, but rather threw their energy into their community. Unlike Eleanor, Roma seemed to prefer the social side of club work, often throwing elaborate parties. She was particularly involved in the United Daughters of the Confederacy, or UDC, which raised funds for Confederate monuments, provided aid to Civil War veterans, and hosted scholarship competitions and events to educate about the Old South, a version of history we now know to be romanticized and often inaccurate. We don't know how Roma felt about women's suffrage, and there were both pro-suffrage and anti-suffrage movements within the UDC. She certainly was not active in the cause. The differences between these two women may have been both cultural and familial. Although born in Nebraska, Eleanor spent most of her life in California. The earliest women's suffrage victories were in the West. Wyoming granted women the right to vote in 1869, followed by Colorado in 1893, and Utah and Idaho in 1896. Roma, on the other hand, was raised in Howard County, Missouri, known as Little Dixie because of its cultural similarities to the South. Six of Eleanor's 12 siblings and step-siblings were women, and she had three daughters out of six children. Roma had one sister and no girls out of five children and stepchildren. Roma may have seen less of a pressing urgency for women's suffrage with no daughters to benefit. Roma was probably surrounded by men who were either against or indifferent to votes for women. Her husband John was a lifelong Democrat, a party which at the time tended to oppose women's suffrage bills. As a Southern lady, she would have been expected to remain non-confrontational and genteel about her thoughts. A friend described her as maintaining her convictions without offense, a true Southerner. Eleanor's father, Alexander Majors, on the other hand, was seemingly silent on women's suffrage, but was a member of the Populist Party, which typically aligned itself with suffrage movements and welcomed women into the political process. He would have been considered somewhat progressive during his life. It is interesting that two women who initially seem so similar, wealthy, educated women born in the Midwest who were married and widowed young and were passionate about club life could live such drastically different lives. <laughs>